Hello my viewers, welcome back to the channel. And by the video title, you know what this video is about. NBA Week 9 Review. Um, we've seen a blockbuster trade, which is the first topic today. A blockbuster trade that happened between the Knicks and the Raptors. Now, it was an anonymous, it's always anonymous, um, person who said that this, this trade right here put the Knicks above the Heat and the Cavs. And I still don't see that, no. Um, nobody on the Cavs, and nobody on the, the um, Knicks are, is better than Jimmy Butler. Like that, and you can argue maybe Bam Adebayo on too as well. Maybe Jalen Bronson's up there in that range too, but none, nobody on the Knicks can um, be able to outperform most of the Heat players. You compare the roster to roster, and especially Colton as well. And then Cavs, um, they look pretty good too as well. I know the Knicks beat them down last year, so the Knicks kind of already kind of a little above them, but the Cavs playing a little better this year, so we'll see how things turn out. But the trade, in my opinion, I'm not a big fan of the trade if I was a Knicks. If I was a Knicks fan, I wouldn't be a big fan of that trade because we traded Emmanuel quickly and we traded R.J. Barrett. For OG Ananobi. If, I, if I'm getting OG Ananobi back, can I at least get something else added to that? Maybe they could have got, see, they could have got Pascal Siakam with that. I, I would prefer a trade of maybe RJ Barrett, quickly, Julius Randle. Give me OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and something else. Like something else like that. I, I feel like that, that trade right there would have been better. Because um, Julius Randle has shown us that he's been up and down, especially at the beginning of the season. Last year in the playoffs, he showed us he's up and down as well. So I feel like I'd be more comfortable having Pascal Siakam as my guy. And then with pair with Jalen Brunson, um, Pascal Siakam is more um, versatile in the paint. Of course, he's the best shooter. Can't stretch the floor a lot, but he's more versatile in the paint. He's a good defender as well, too. So having him, I think, will be a, a little upgrade than Julius Randle. And then also having OG Ananobi out there on the perimeter, who could, who's a, a good elite defender around the perimeter and he can shoot the three ball pretty well, too, and do some other things, too, as well. So, hopefully, this takes this game to another level. But I feel like the trade benefited the um, Raptors more. The Raptors got more back with the R.J. Barry and Man Quickly. Um, and the pieces they have over there, they can just um, kind of build around that. And I feel like um, the Knicks kind of declined a little bit. O.J. Anobi, don't get me wrong, he's a good player. But I feel like they gave up too much to get O.J. Anobi. But we'll see how things um, plan out. It could be different. It could go out there and turn out to be very good as well for them. Of course, they still make the playoffs, of course. We're going to see how O.J. Anobi performs when he's on a brighter stage with a bigger role, too, as well, playing on a team that's going to be in the playoffs as well. Raptors have a chance to make the playoffs, too, but it's more of like a kind of a play-in battle type team, lower seed. So the, the Knicks should be at least a top six seed in the conference. So we'll see how that pans out. Another thing, too, the, the Pistons finally broke. Finally broke their losing streak. They lost, what, 28 straight games. Finally broke the losing streak um, against the Raptors, of course, out of all teams. <laughs> um, broke the um, losing streak to the Raptors. Went out there and handled business. It was a close game. And they played the Rockets, I believe, today. So we're going to see if they can continue a new streak. There are 26 games under 500. Maybe, you never know. Um, Musty Williams is a good coach, in my opinion. But just the Pistons have been so bad for so long. So it's kind of hard to go in there and do some things. But he's going to have to switch his style up and try to implement a certain culture, a certain standard, and accountability for all those players out there, too, as well, to try to bring them back to – relevancy a little bit because Emile Doka did his first year with the Rockets so far um he, he got there to the Rockets the Rockets only won 25 games last year I think like 27 games last year and he already got 15 of them right now 15 to 15 they're the eight seed in the west um he, he implemented a lot of different culture to the team Dylan Brooks is playing good with them of course they have Fred Van Fleet to add it to the team as well so it can, it can be done you just have to kind of implement your culture and kind of just have to like get your guys to believe in what you're saying and preaching and just start holding guys accountable be like okay we're doing this and doing that and just kind of like build upon it look at every game like your first game like that we're not going to dwell on all the losses we're going to play every game like it's our first game we go out there and every time we start over like that whether we, we when we lose we learn from the, the losses when we win we will learn from the wins as well how we can improve and keep on winning so we're going to just keep doing let's keep doing that and maybe the pistons can find themselves i don't know somewhere like at least more comfortable or something k cunningham got to step up though there's a guy he's got to step up i know he missed a lot i mean he missed a lot of last year at like that but he got to step up they drafted him high up in that draft for a reason need him to step up need him to make plays hopefully they start implementing on uh, wiseman a lot more Later in the season, um, when they got traded from the Warriors, they're using him a lot, lot more. So we're going to see how things are going to pan out. But the last topic of the day is um, the topic that happened last, yesterday, I believe, um, when the Timberwolves played against the Lakers. And the Lakers um, fell short. LeBron thought that he um, hit a three-pointer, but they said it was a two. They said his foot was on the line, so they, they deemed it a two. And they was mad about that. You see the replay... Um, it, it does like his foot is kind of like on the line. It's kind of close to the line, on the line like that. But, you know, it's kind of hard to determine. I, I'm, I'm always still mad about that play. I'm, as you know, I'm a Heat fan. You know, Max Struess, three-point um, play a couple of years ago in the Eastern Conference Championship, and they took the points off the board. Now, we had those points back on the board. Uh, they, said, they said Max Struess stepped out of bounds, so they took the points off the, uh, off the board. Now, we had those points back 
we, we, we probably would have won that game because three extra points added, and it could have been a different outcome because we lost by or the two points, three points, something like that, and close to the, like close to the end. So Max Drew said he was out of bounds, so you, and you kind of see his foot slightly above, like over the out of bounds line. Like and you see the you see the um, replay, he's not out of bounds. He's like he's like he's like over the line like that, and lost and lost his body didn't touch. Touched the line or passed the line, he was good. His feet was just like over the line like that. So I don't, I don't know if they consider your arm being out of bounds, out of bounds or not. But that's all right. There was crazy. Remember, remember that one play that they missed though one time before. Um, we see the Golden State Warriors and they was playing the Rockets. Remember Kevin Durant was bouncing all out of bounds and they say he saved the ball. He was way out of bounds. Look at the Rockets still won that game. But referees got to start calling it better. We've seen this in sports this year a lot. We've seen it in um especially football a lot too. This past Sunday with the lines and stuff. Well, things that's going on and like that and like the referees kind of implementing and like just destroying the game so hopefully they can start getting things better and start calling things better and basketball and stuff as well but um yeah the lakers they've been struggling they've been struggling either way whether they won that game or not they still been has been struggling they've been struggling for a few weeks now and just kind of can't get into the rhythm get into a right the right groove and you know, the west is tough so you got to come on with it and, you know after you know, since january is here now you know today's new year's you got to be ready to Get into that mode because you know when the All Star break come up, and after that All Star break, that's when teams you kind of know who you are, like that type of team you are, and fighting that adversity, fighting for seed and stuff. Lakers was last year a play in team; they got themselves in, they got to the conference championship. But this year, I think they, they might not have the same juice. I think to be able to do that whole run again. So hopefully, they can find a way to just solidify a top six seed spot and give them a playoff spot. But that's all I got for the video today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Peace out.